Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is September 6th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to discuss with you the August update of for, for the Polar Science Center's sea ice volume reanalysis report provided by Piomass. And this report is one that is updated monthly, and it, it looks tends to look back in time, and and usually goes through the previous mid month time period, and it gives us an idea what the present trend for for Arctic sea ice volume is overall, as well as recent indicators for sea ice volume. Now, sea ice volume is, is the measure of, of the ice both at the surface and the depth or thickness of the ice as well. So it, it tends to provide a, a more complete picture of the health of sea ice in the Arctic. Other indicators that we look at are sea ice extent and the remaining sea ice that is is multi-year sea ice as also health indicators for sea ice as well so according to the recent august update arctic sea ice volume still is continuing along the present decadal trend of loss in the range of 3,100 cubic kilometers of loss per decade, which is a, a very significant rate of loss when you consider the, the average sea ice volume in the Arctic. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but it's worth noting that presently this year's sea ice volume is not tracking as low as during 2017, although, it is tracking lower than 2015 and 2014 as well as, as 2013 although 2011 and, and 2012 were were record low years for sea ice volume during during the, the September time frame or the end of melt season time frame looking at the sea ice volume anomaly trend versus the 1979 to 2017 average, an average that has seen consistent loss and, and so overall should be looked at as, 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 as a period of time that tracks a trend of loss. So this, this baseline average is not really a, a flat line average, it's a, it's a moving average trending downward. But even looking at the average, we can see, even looking at the, I'm sorry, this mean sea ice volume from 1979 to 2017, we can see quite a bit of a divergence from the mean line, which is a, a downward moving line, unfortunately, in the present measure, with the, the mean line for mid-August ranging around 10,000 cubic kilometers and the present sea ice volume measure in the range of looks like, let's see, about 5,000 cubic kilometers of sea ice, maybe 5,500 cubic kilometers of sea ice as of mid-August, which is about the sixth or seventh lowest on record considering past years but is, is part of a, a substantial decadal loss trend as we saw in the previous graph. Just to highlight some other trends, this does not include the update for September of, of 2018, which would occur in the next update. And based on present trends, appears to be trending toward a, a bit higher than than 2017, but not by much. But we can see the the decadal trend of loss for September at 3,200 cubic kilometers, and the, which is at the end of summer melt season, and the decadal trend of loss for April at 2,700 cubic cubic kilometers.
I just want to drill down to a couple more bits of information which are, are relevant to this melt season. And it's worth noting that the areas where sea ice volume is higher than normal are in regions where the sea ice is, is, is rather thin and you have single year sea ice and, and sea ice that is typically more vulnerable to melt. But the region that has taken much of the impact of melt this year, at least as it relates to sea ice volume, is the region north of Greenland and closer to the pole, particularly on the North American side of the Arctic. And this is an indicator that we are losing thick multi-year sea ice at more rapid rates this year, which has been masked by the overall volume trend and, and may show some additional weakness that is not just indicated by the volume trend for this year. Scientists had tended to think that this region of sea ice, particularly near Greenland, would tend to be more resilient. And, and these lost trends kind of belie that notion. We'll have to look at trends year on year, but it does look like this sea ice near Greenland is becoming more mobile, more thin, more broken, and more diffuse, taking on more of the characteristic of, of the more of the characteristics of the ice that we have tended to see in the Beaufort Sea and on the Siberi Siberian side of the Arctic with, with much thinner and, and much more diffuse and much more mobile ice flows. So just an update based on biomasses, observational and model analysis, analyses of sea ice volume it's worth reiterating that loss of sea ice in the Arctic is a signature of human-caused climate change due primarily to fossil fuel burning and, and that the rate of sea ice loss has, has tended to surprise a number of scientists, although we haven't hit worst case predictions for, for rates of sea ice loss. Although it does look like under present trends, there is a potential for ice-free summers as we get into the 2020s. And along the present trend, it does look like we will tend to see ice-free summers for the Arctic in the 2030s along the, the present trend of loss, if that does continue. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.